everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a review on the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation. If you do wanna see a review and a demo, please keep watching. The full name for this foundation is the Bite Beauty Change Maker Supercharged Micellar Foundation. That is a mouthful. <laughs> um, wow, why couldn't they just name it Bite Beauty Change Maker? Why add Supercharged Micellar Foundation? No clue. Retails for $39.50 on Sephora's website. That's where I purchased mine. It does come in 32 different shades. I purchased the shade in T100. I do want to read a little bit about this foundation on Sephora's website. A clean, long-wearing foundation with gentle micellar technology that mimics skin texture for a natural, flawless finish. It is medium coverage. It has a natural finish. Here's a closer look on what the packaging looks like. It says, bite. You do get one fluid ounce. When you turn the foundation over on the back, you do have some directions here at the bottom. And then a little bit about the foundation. On the side here, you have the ingredient list so let's go ahead and open this up here's what the actual foundation tube looks like I also want to mention that the shade name is here at the top of the box and the shade name is in T100 you get one fluid ounce of product or 30 milliliters open this up hopefully this is the correct shade it does come sealed which is awesome I love when foundations have that that means you know that nobody tampered with it take a little bit on the back of my hand there's the shade in T100 this shade should match me. I already moisturized and primed my skin. For moisturizer, I went with my Verse Dew Point Gel Cream. Primer, I went with my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base. Let's see what this foundation looks like. It's kind of blended out. Actually, that blended right into my skin. It does have medium coverage. It did cover up my redness a little bit. Taking one more pump on the back of my hand. Dotting it all over the face. It does feel very lightweight. It feels like a moisturizer. I'm noticing that the foundation oxidized a little bit. I'm not sure how well it is translating on camera, but in person, I'm looking at my mirror in front of me. It looks a little bit dark. Dotting this all over, using the same two pumps that I pumped out on the back of my hand. I'm not using any extra product. Now let's blend out the foundation. On the right side, I'm going to be using my brush. Here's what one layer of the foundation looks like blended out using my brush foundation blended out into nothing. I do want to see what it looks like with my damp beauty blender on the left side of my face. I'm noticing the same thing. The foundation is blending out into nothing. I would expect that using my damp beauty blender does soak up a lot of product. I wasn't expecting that from a brush. This is what one layer of the foundation looks like using my damp beauty blender. I do prefer the brush side Whereas the Beauty Blender side, it did soak up the majority of the product. I will be building up the foundation using a second layer. One more pump. That much of the foundation. Just dotting it all over. I do think that the foundation shade is too light for me. We're going to make it work. Here's what two layers of the foundation looks like. I won't be adding any more layers of foundation. I definitely think it is true medium coverage. Bite Beauty also came out with two different primers. They have a hydrating primer and a matte primer. I did not purchase those two primers. They also came out with a pressed powder. I did not purchase that because I didn't think I would need it. Maybe I might need it. I'll have to go back to Sephora and exchange the foundation anyways. I'll probably pick up the powder while I'm there. Hopefully the powder does give me a little bit more coverage. So far so good, you guys. I really do like how the foundation does sit on my skin. It does feel very lightweight. I'm pressing my fingers on my face. That way I can see if the foundation does transfer and it does just a slight bit. I'm regretting not purchasing the powder, but we will purchase it when we go back to Sephora. I do want to show you guys what the foundation looks like. Dry down on the back of my hand. It looks like it did kind of oxidize. Let's pump out a fresh pump. We'll do a fresh pump here. And then we'll blend it out. 
does oxidize. How interesting. The shade that I purchased might work for me. I'm not sure yet. Let's see how it performs throughout the entire day. For mascara, I'm going to be applying my Dior Show Plump and Volume Mascara. I know, this is a super expensive mascara. This mascara is super pricey. But I got it for Christmas. I might as well use it, right? For lips, I'm just gonna be applying a lip balm. This is from Dr. Bronner's. This is their Peppermint Organic Lip Balm. Came in my Target February box. If you guys have not seen that video, I'll link it right over here in the card. Here's one last look on how the foundation looks like. I will check back in with you guys at the end of the night to see how the foundation performs and I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it's the end of the night of me testing out the Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation. Here's what the foundation is currently looking like. I'm so surprised how the foundation held up throughout my entire day. As you guys know, my skin type is super oily. I don't feel greasy, even though I look like I am greasy. I did not blot throughout my entire day. As the day progressed, I started to like this foundation more. It is so weird, but I actually do enjoy how this foundation wore throughout my day. I don't like how the foundation looks because I have problematic skin. You can still see my redness peeking through on the Beauty Blender side, and a little bit of my darkness on the brush side. But overall, you guys, this foundation wore really well throughout my day. If you have perfect skin and wanna go for that no makeup makeup look, I think you're gonna enjoy this foundation. For me, I don't like how it looks, but I love how it feels on my skin. And for a little bit, that's because I did not set the foundation. We'll be going back and exchanging the shade that I did purchase. I also took a picture of this foundation using flash. I'm gonna pop it on the screen right here so you guys can take a look. It does have a little bit of white cast to it. I will check back in with you guys tomorrow. We'll see you guys then. Hey guys, it is day three of me testing out the Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation. I went back to my local Sephora and I purchased the shade in T120. I also picked up the pressed powder as well. I got this in the shade Tan 2. Hopefully this will give me extra coverage. Let's go ahead and see if the shade in T120 is gonna match me. Tomorrow I am gonna be testing out pressed powder on camera with you guys. For today, I do wanna try on the shade in T120. Here's what the packaging looks like, and then I have the shade in T120. Let's pop this open. Here we have that safety seal, so that means it's not used. I'm gonna open this up. One pump on the back of my hand. I did try out the shade in T120 in store, but you know, Sephora's light. A little bit too bright in there. Here's what T120 looks like. It does look a bit orange, but I'm hoping the shade does oxidize throughout my day. Here we have the shade T120. I think this would be a good match. The shade match does look promising. We'll see how it does perform throughout my entire day. I do want to blend in the foundation using my fingertips since we did use a brush the first time. It didn't seem that I was getting enough coverage and then using a damp beauty blender, it just soaked up all of the product. Taking another little pump on the back of my hand. I'm gonna dot this all over. Noticing it did kind of oxidize. In person, it looks like it did. We're gonna be blending out the foundation using our fingertips. So I guess we'll do a rubbing motion. See, I'm getting full coverage using my fingertips. I did this the other day. I'm actually getting coverage. I'm not wasting a lot of product or caking on the foundation. I did also prime and moisturize my skin. For moisturizer, I went with my Milk Makeup Vegan Moisturizer. For primer today, we're using a pore filling primer. This is the Touch and So No Pore Plum Primer. Here's what one layer of the foundation looks like. I do want to apply a tiny bit more just to cover up my darkness here and here. Taking just a little bit like that. Taking that little bit and just applying it to my dark areas. It definitely dries down darker. I feel like when I was at Sephora, I should have just waited until the foundation dried down. I really thought that this shade would match me. We do have to go back. We do have to go back. But I do want to see if the setting powder in Tan 2 does make it work somehow. Here's another close-up of what the foundation looks like. For mascara today, I'm going to be applying the Dior Plump and Volume. I do want to set just underneath my eyes. For lips, I'm going to be applying the shade in Cinnamon Spice from Wet n Wild. 
here's one last look on how everything looks like. If you have not watched my lip swatch video on the Wet n Wild Mega Last Matte Lip Color, I'll leave it right over here in the card. I will check back in with you guys at the end of the night to see how the shade in T120 performs. We'll see you guys then. Hey guys, it's the end of the night of me testing out the Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation in the shade T120. Here's what the foundation is currently looking like. I did like how the foundation did wear throughout my entire day. I do have a little bit of settling into my smile lines. It did settle in this underneath my eyes just a little bit. I remember I did set my under eyes, so I'm not sure why it creased on this eye. It did crease on this eye just a little bit. It also did settle into my neck wrinkles. That's because I did not set this. Tomorrow we will be applying the pressed setting powder. It set the previous shade and I liked how my makeup lasted throughout my entire day after using a little bit of translucent powder. The foundation itself it did oxidize t120 is a little bit too warm for me i might have to go back to sephora i'm looking a little bit orange a little bit oompa loompa ish but like i did mention to you guys we will be testing out the press setting powder i am a little bit shiny so i'm gonna be taking my damp beauty blender and just pressing in the shine and you guys can see a huge difference. I'm super shiny here, and I'm not so shiny here. The second day when I did try out this foundation, I did blot on that day. After I did set it with setting powder, and I looked really good after blotting. Super excited to see how this pressed powder works out. I will check back in with you guys tomorrow to test out the pressed setting powder, and I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it is day four of me testing out the Bite Beauty Changemaker Foundation. I already applied the foundation on my skin with my fingertips in the shade T120. I also primed and moisturized my skin for moisturizer. I went with my Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. And for primer, I went with my Too Faced Prime and Peachy Cooling Matte Primer. Today, we are going to be testing out the pressed powder. Here's a closer look on what the packaging looks like. It says Bite, and then it says Pressed Powder. When you flip it over on the back, it tells you a little description about the pressed powder. And you do have some directions here. On the side, it says Bite, and then on this side, you have the ingredients. And I purchased mine in the shade Tan 2. Let's go ahead and open this up come with a little puff and here's what the actual pressed powder looks like. Oh, it comes with a mirror which is exciting. I'm going to try not to blind you guys. I think the shade in tan 2 would match me. Let's swatch this. You can barely see it, so I'm assuming the pressed powder would work on my skin tone. On the back of the compact, it does also have the shade name. We'll be using the puff to press the setting powder in. I'm going to press my puff in. We're just going to set this side of my face first to see what it looks like. Compare the difference. Um, why do I feel like tan 2 is too dark on me? It's looking a little bit dark. I don't like this puff. I'm just going to take a pointed brush, tap into this. There is a lot of kick up. But let's set this side of my face. On the right side, I applied the pressed powder and it's looking too dark on me in person. I'm not sure if you guys notice it on camera. On the left side, I think it looks a little bit decent, but after I applied the powder, I'm looking a little bit too dark. When I was at Sephora, I did swatch the shade in Tan 1 and that seemed a little bit too light. I definitely think Bite Beauty should have more of a selection in the pressed powder as well as they do in the foundation. We had two shades in the tan category, two shades in the deep, and then two shades in the light, two shades in the medium as well. I don't think that's enough. Since we already have it, let's go ahead and set the entire face. Here's a closer look on what the pressed powder looks like. Should have purchased the shade in Tan 1. Now I definitely have to go back to Sephora, exchange the foundation again, and press powder. I do want to see how the pressed powder does last throughout my entire day. I will check back in with you guys at the end of the night to see how the pressed powder performs. I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it's the end of the night of me testing out the shade in T120 and the shade in Tan 2. Here's what the foundation and the pressed powder looks like together.
as you guys can tell by now the foundation did oxidize I am very orange I do like how the foundation and the pressed powder did work together I just don't like the shade and I am a bit shiny I have not blotted throughout my entire day I was so tempted to blot using this pressed powder but I wanted to show you guys how the foundation looked like I will be blotting for the first time tonight I have a little bit saturated on this cotton pad automatically the pressed powder is way too dark on me like I said again <laughs> I do have to go back and exchange it just blotting it with the pressed powder I do like how matte it's looking blotting with the pressed powder I do look matte and I do have a little bit more coverage first on this side I do look extremely oily so far so good you guys I do really love the formula I like the pressed powder I like how it does give me extra coverage I'll check back in with you guys when I do exchange these items out and I will see you guys then hey guys it is day five of me testing out the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation. I did go back to my local Sephora and exchange the previous shade that I have for the shade in T110. I also purchased the shade in Tan 1. Hopefully these shades would match me better. The shade again is in the shade T110. Let's open this up. Again, we do have that safety seal. And let's pump. One pump. Hopefully this does match. I did try this on in store. It did look like it would match me. Let's see what it looks like applied on the face. This shade looks like it might match me a little bit better since this foundation does oxidize. It looks like a good match. Let's blend her in. I'm taking what's left on the back of my hand and just applying that to my face. I'm just gonna be using my fingertips to blend it in. Taking another small pump on the back of my hand, we're gonna dot this all over since it's a little bit easier instead of applying it in one section like I did on this side. I'm gonna start blending this in with my fingertips. We can apply more foundation later on. I did already moisturize my skin. I did not prime today. This is one of those days that I just wanna try it out without any primer just to see how it will last. The moisturizer I use is by First. It's my Dew Point Gel Cream Moisturizer. I am getting a fragrance smell. I'm not sure what it is. It smells interesting. Taking one small pump of the foundation, I just want to apply a little bit where my darkness is. We'll let that sit for a little bit. Blend it out using my fingertips. Here's what the foundation is currently looking like. look a little bit golden but I do think it will oxidize. I do want to read a little bit about the pressed powder on Sephora's website. Since the first time when we did test it out I didn't read anything about it. I just applied it on my skin. A clean talc free powder made with finely milled volcanic materials to blur, mattify, and touch up on the go. It continues on to say it's a long wearing lightweight formula that lets you boost your coverage for a silky soft matte finish to give you a put together look that you crave all day long. Creates a non cakey soft focus finish. Again the shade that I picked up is in the shade tan one since tan two was a little bit too dark on me hopefully this shade will match me and it comes with the compact and the sponge the sponge is very flimsy i'm not going to use it taking a fluffy powder brush we're going to dip into the pressed powder set all over i definitely think the shade in tan one is a little bit better for me even though in the pan it does look a little bit too light even the foundation is looking a little bit too light on me but we will see we're gonna give this foundation and the pressed powder a benefit of the doubt. See how it looks like towards the end of the night. For mascara, I went with my Dior Plump and Volume. For lips, I'm gonna be applying the shade in Very Victoria by Charlotte Tilbury. Here's one last look on how everything looks like. We'll check back in with you guys at the end of the night and I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it's the end of the night of me testing out the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation in the shade T110 and the pressed powder in the shade Tan 1. Here's what the foundation is currently looking like. I 
I did not blot throughout my entire day because I wanted to show you guys what the pressed powder and the foundation look like together. I want to blot using the pressed powder in the shade Tan 1. I'm going to take the sponge that it came with. We're just going to blot this side of my face. I wish Bite Beauty would have made a translucent setting powder instead of a colored pressed powder. Here's what the pressed powder side looks like. On this side, I didn't use the pressed powder. I'm not loving the setting powder. I do love the foundation. The pressed powder does not wow me at all. I could have just used a blotting sheet. I wanted to show you guys on camera what the pressed powder looks like. When you first swatch the pressed powder like I did in store, it looks so light. It's swatched on the back of my hand, but when you apply it, it's looking kind of dark. We still have two more days to test out the foundation and the pressed powder. I will check back in with you guys on day seven, and I will see you guys then. Hey guys, it's the end of the week of me testing out the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation and the pressed powder. My final thoughts on the foundation and the pressed powder is that I like these products separately. I currently have the foundation in the shade T110 applied all over. If you want to try out the foundation, I would suggest going a lighter shade because it does oxidize. The pressed powder was really good. I did enjoy using it for blotting. Yesterday I applied the pressed powder by itself and I did really enjoy the coverage. I don't really like the liquid foundation and the pressed powder together. I just find it makes me look a little bit too dark. The best way I would recommend using the foundation is applying a thin layer with your fingertips to achieve full coverage. Don't use a brush or a damp beauty blender. It will soak up a lot of the product. One thing I did not like about the pressed powder is the sponge that it came with. It's super flimsy. What I would recommend is purchasing a pack of these cotton rounds. That's what I did. They sell those cosmetic rounds sponges. It comes in squares as well. Here's a close-up of what a pack of sponges would look like. This one's a little bit more thicker versus the Bite Beauty one. It's definitely the same size. Mine is dirty because I've been using it. Overall, you guys, I do recommend the foundation and the pressed powder. They are great. I do want to quickly go over on the products that I currently have on my skin. For moisturizer, I went in with my Milk Makeup Vegan Milk Moisturizer. For primer, I currently have on my Tatcha Silk Canvas. This is a mini one. I haven't really committed to a full size because I don't like digging my fingers back and forth in the same thing. I do want to purchase the liquid silk canvas. I'm not sure if I do want to purchase a full size. Hopefully they come out with a mini version. I don't want to be committed. I'd rather have a pump versus digging in using my fingertip. For foundation, I currently have on the Bite Beauty Change Maker Foundation in the shade T110. For concealer, I went with my e.l.f. Camo Concealer. This is in the shade Deep Olive. For eyeshadow, I currently have the mini Nubian Palette by Juvia's Place. First went in with this shade all over, and then I used this shade on the crease. I went with this other matte shade on my outer. All over, I currently have this shimmer shade up applied on my lid. The lip shade I currently have on is by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's in the shade Bittersweet. I'm not sure when I will be posting this video, but I just heard that all the Apple stores are shutting down because of the coronavirus. One person in Florida currently has the virus. Wash your hands, you guys. If you're not able to wash your hands, please use hand sanitizer. This virus is getting a little bit scary for me. Definitely tune on to your news stations, and I love you guys. Stay safe. I will see you guys in my next video.